Rosh Hashanah is exemplified in the best way by the word Bereshis. It's the start of the year. It's also the start of the Torah. Rosh Hashanah is a two-day holiday. Not like just the added day that's added to holidays in the diaspora. It's the only two-day holiday. First and second of Tishri. And this two-day holiday is B, that's the letter Bet, and then Rashid, two starts. But there's a Maclocus about, is it two days? Is it 48 hours? Is it one day of 48 hours? And that's what Bereshit means, because if you don't separate the bet from it, to make it two starts, then you have Bereshit in the beginning. So the entire Rosh Hashanah can be analyzed from the word Bereshit. And I suggest that you do. And it's a beautiful thing. Remember that the bet is two, and that can be separated. And then we have reshis. And strangely enough, the gematria of the word reshis, reshit, is 911. 911. Just like we had that 911 incident here which is a start. It was a start. The idea of, of Bereshis in the six days of creation also, that there are two starts, even within the, the seven days of, of the first week. And, and because always remember that the sixth day of creation is Rosh Hashanah, the first day. And that was the creation of man. So, Bereshis created six. And man was created on the sixth day. Also, always remember that he created six, but there's a seventh. This seventh is not created. <laughs> That's the whole point. It's before creation. And that's the beauty of the concept of the Shabbos. Shabbat, you know, the letters which are found in Bereshis, Shabbat is not created, you see. Its essence comes from before creation. And so Shabbat, quite frankly, that's, that's like one of the essences of Judaism. Because there are six creations and then there's a Shabbat. So, Bereshit means the six creations, the first six days of the week, which are evident in the first chapter of Genesis. And then when the seventh day comes, that's a whole other story. And that's the second part of creation, man's second level. And that's the B of Bereshis, two starts. Because there's a physical level and a kind of like a spiritual level. And this exists in everything. There's a inside and an outside. You know, in everything. So, I was lucky enough to be a tennis player and to play professionally. And there was, even for me, I, there was two levels. There was the match I'm playing against an opponent, an external opponent. You know, and then the match I'm playing in myself the internal aspect of winning and losing. 
if you saw the U.S. Open, which, uh, which I'll call the virtual U.S. Open, the tennis thing that happened last week here, um, there was a player who lost, Zerev, and he lost the match. And then in the interview afterwards, he started crying. And so not only the match was lost, then he had this internal reaction to the external match. In a certain sense, one calls one can call that, well, the word is jihad, because jihad means struggle. And in some forms, they believe that there's an internal, uh, there's an external jihad, and then in his internal jihad with the self. So I'll call this struggle. There was a great book written like a hundred years ago called Struggle. And so we'll call it struggle. And so the external struggle is in the match, and then the internal struggle is in the self. You see? And the real secret is to find the internal struggle and to experience the internal struggle and to experience one's self-reaction to external loss. And this was and is, uh, you know, my, the great benefit in my life that I was able to uh, be a competitive player, meaning a, a competitive means uh, to compete with, you see, um, to inquire with. Uh, so the point is, I had the opportunity to play an external opponent to find out about myself. And this also is Bereshis, two beginnings, because it's two of everything. And when these two things are in balance, that's when the third thing opens. There is no kind of like third thing. When the two things balance, the third opens. There's the same thing in Kundalini Yoga. There's an ida and a pingala nerve. And when those two balance, when the right and nostril and the left nostril balance, then the shashumna opens, the third opens. It's not really a shashumna. It's a balance between the ida and pingala. You see? It's the same thing in the body. When the front opens and the back opens and the center opens. When the right opens and the left opens, the center opens. When the right hip and the left hip move, all of a sudden the center moves. The spine doesn't really, you know, move itself. It's the right and the left that help the spine move. You see? So when they say from the center, it really means from a right and left balance. B rashis. See? Two beginnings. B rashis. Barashis created six, and then the seventh opens. See? And in a certain sense, created six is right, left, up, down, forward, back, and then the center opens. And that's actually what you're going to see with the lulav later on, because that center is the lulav itself. Beautiful, you know, lulav itself, which is the spine. So these things, this seventh, is a point, a, a, a belly button point, a hurrah point, in the sixth of the cube. Bereshis, created six, is the six directions in the cube. 
the Mekaba cube. And then man is that is that kutpa, that pole, when he stands, the standing man. Could also be considered a vav, a six. And then that vav becomes a zion when the head goes, I don't know here, from the left to the right, to the center, then the vav, yeah, maybe it's this way, on the becomes a Zion. The, 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 the Vav has its head to the left, and then the Zion, the head is in the middle. And these are the two letters that make up the Het. The letter Het, the eight, the, the infinite number. You see? Oh, as I express this, it blossoms already. And this is all from the concept of Bereshis and Rosh Hodesh, excuse me, Rosh Hashanah, which is a Rosh Hodesh, but the, the, it's not really... Rosh Hodesh is, is in, in uh, Nisan, you know, kind of. It's the beginning of months. This is the beginning of years. There's a difference. And especially in this time of coronavirus, each year is a dog year. You ever hear of a phrase called dog years? It's like seven years. And time is multiplied. In these four or five months, I, I consider these six months lost to be like three and a half years. This, this is dog time when you're older. And so this Rosh Hashanah, exemplified by the word Bereshis, because there are two days, see, there's two dinim, the hard dinim of, of Leah, that's 320, and the, and the softer dinim of Rachel, 280, which comes out to be 600, which is the cube. The final mem, the square, which is a cube in three dimensions. And it's the shofar, because 320 and 280 is 600. That's shofar, 586. And 586 plus the 14 perics of the hand that hold the shofar is 600. And in the 600, we have, you know, well, shofar is, it's a, it's a yom teruah. The, 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 it's the holiday of, of um, uh, Rosh Hashanah. It's exemplified by the shofar. And the shofar, and what is the shofar? The shofar is an internal production for an external sound. The shofar is used by an external instrument for an internal breath to make a sound. And deep underneath everything else, there's an internal shofar. This internal shofar is higher than the external shofar. And this internal shofar is said, actually, this Shabbos, because you don't blow the shofar on Shabbos. And so this Shabbos is called a Zechoron Teruah. We don't, it's not a Yom Teruah. It's not a day of blowing. It's a Zechoron Teruah. It's a day of remembrance of the, of the sound of Teruah. And that remembrance is a silent scream. 
And that silent scream occurs on a Shabbos. And that makes this Shabbos higher. And it's higher than say, than doing the bracha, uh, than doing the, 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 the external shofar itself. Or, or blowing the shofar. This Shabbos is higher because it's an internal shofar. And you do the shofar without, and it's called the, the small still voice. And it's brought down as the silent scream. So when you, you don't need to scream, do it without the voice. And that's higher, and that's Shabbos. And so this particular Shabbos is, is higher than the, than the, than the days of, the, of Rosh Hashanah that don't come out on Shabbos. Because there are two of everything, an external sound and an internal sound. And what does Zakaron mean? Zaka. Now, I, you know, I don't pronounce well because I'm self-taught. Nobody bothered to help me because they didn't make a profit out of it. Zakaron comes from Zaka. Z Zion, Kaf, Resh. It means remembrance, but also means man. Man. Zakaron, it's man, and then uh, uh, Vav Nun means uh, a diminutive. So it's a diminutive man. It's man. It's like Shimshon, Shemesh with a Vav Nun, means man. It, 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 it means small, you know, diminutive son. That's you and. And this is Zakaron, it's, the, it's man, Teruah. Not the yom of the Teruah, but the man. And that man, Teruah, isn't going to do the Teruah. He's not going to do the, the, the shofar. He's going to do it himself internally. And that's what you learn from, from external competition and how beautiful my life was and how much everybody sacrificed for me. And so I learned this in external competition that the real struggle, the real jihad, is the internal. The real, the real development is the internal. And this appears now on Yom, excuse me, Zakharon Teruah. The day of the man's Teruah. The masculine Teruah. Without the horn. So these few minutes here are a little introduction for this year's Rosh Hashanah that actually comes out on the Shabbos. We have to, and and the and the beauty of it, and Shana Tovah.